Oh, I'm playing Donkey Donkey Donkey. <laughs> I played this dude. <laughs> you guys remember I played Donkey 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 a long time ago. Or, no, 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 not not even me. Hikaru played Donkey Donkey Donkey. This, this dude was in Hikaru's video. Alright, emote only. We have 3 out of 3. We're playing a 3,000. This guy played against Hikaru. Playing D6, so I'm not gonna play my... My Yuge. Unless he goes G6. Okay, he plays G6, fine. I'm still gonna prepare, and now I'm gonna play H4. I had a game where my opponent allowed me to move the pawn all the way. Okay, this person does not allow me to move the pawn all the way. But I, I like where my bishop is positioned. Um, Yeah, I had a game I played F3, but I kind of don't want to play F3. I kind of feel like being edgy today. So, now it's like, yeah, so he, yeah, he does it anyway. GH is kind of interesting, by the way. Uh, should I play it? How edgy are we feeling? It's definitely a bad move. I play. Yeah, and so now... Queen g2 is... This was my plan. Like, to get to this position, and then to figure it out. Um... <laughs> donkey, donkey, donkey. <laughs> His username is so funny. <laughs> I'm getting a, a real enjoyment out of uh, my opponent's username. Okay, that move... That looks like a bad move. That looks like a bad move. Maybe it's not bad. Because I was going to take and play knight e2. Yeah, I was going to do this, and I don't... What is... Who's defending... Like... I could also castle short, just as a last resort. Th this might have been a little too edgy for this, for, for this round. Um, yeah, and so what about just, like, bishop b3? Yeah, and I'm just gonna go f5. Like, that's my plan. a5, a4. I'm, I'm not gonna take the pawn. I mean, I, I can, but it opens up a lot of problems. Right, I, I, I was expecting this move. And now... Maybe knight g3, maybe f5. I guess we gotta go for it, right? I mean, we gotta... We might as well go for the king. Going for the king wins the game, so... Then it's a question of do I take this or do I take this? Very tough to say, I'm not sure. I think they, they have, they have, they hold equal weight. Probably I will take this because it feels more natural to join forces with my bishop if my opponent opens the center. But who knows? Uh, this is weak. I should protect it. Okay, this move, yeah. Let's play a4. This was always the idea. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Let's take with the rook. So now my rook is in the game, kind of randomly. I think my king will be safest on d1. I think what my opponent is trying to do is, like, get down here. But I could still castle. Like, if it, I can still castle, and maybe I don't have to castle. Um, but I, I also feel like if we, like, start trading pieces, some of these pawns are going to feel really weak in the endgame. And I'm also keeping a lot of clock pressure on all of my opponents, which is which I like. That's a good move. That is a good move, I think. Ooh, now, now is a tough question. What am I capturing here? Am I taking this? Am I taking that? Take... Am I taking on g6? It actually doesn't matter. He's gonna take this. But I, I, I think my king is safe on d1. Like, I can't shake this out of my head. My kid, like, I don't see how he's gonna win. Knight c5 is definitely an interesting concept, but I also have queen g3 offering a queen trade. Take, take, take. Ed. Knight c5. Take, take. Ed, knight c5. I gotta, I, I don't know. I mean, it's blitz. I can't solve chess right now. Or ever. Queen g6, queen g3 now? ED? Like, what's the best move? Oh, 
Oh, this is so tough. Queen g6, queen g3. Let's go here. Adding this into the mix. Okay. He takes my bishop. Looks like what he has to do, by the way. Terrifying position. <sighs> okay, I'm two pawn up, uh, one pawn. I'm only up a pawn, not two pawns. E7. This feels smarter. I mixed up my move order. I mixed up my move order. It would come down to a one move tactic. I forgot about rook f1. I only calculated take take rook f1. Now he just deflects my queen. Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. The run had to end at some point. Oh my god. Even that is frustrating because I was doing so well. I mean, it's hard to beat 94%, you know what I mean? Like... What was the best move here? Was it rook a5? I know, you guys are really smart. You guys are really smart, yeah. I mean, you played like a tw like a 3300. Like, what am I supposed to do? I should have moved my rook. Rook c4, huh? Yeah, and I mean, I mean, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> um, that was a very complicated game. That was a very complicated game. It was equal. A5. I guess I could have I could have started trying to take. And here the computer wants to play this move to just try to fight back against his rook. Like take, 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 and now white is doing well. I went here because this, I mean, this looks so natural. Despite being a pawn up, I'm not doing great. And then, uh, yeah, here, I mean, I, that's a shame to miss rook f1. Um, I should have played rook c4. That was a comp, that was a tough game. I mean, what can I say? That was a, uh, why don't I play queen d5? Guys, I know you're really smart, but queen d5, uh, it, there will be something. There's a lot of possibilities. Some of you in the in the end said, uh, yeah, I calculated take, take. I calculated here, here, king h7, bishop h6 idea, I take, take, I take on d4 and like, oh. Yeah, queen d5 was not winning. I mean, I probably played like a 12-year-old future grandmaster or so. It was complicated, I promise. Why do I overthink? That game wasn't an overthinking. That was an actually, you know, good back and forth game where the better player won in the end. There's nothing. What if king e2 at the end? When, guys? What king e2? You mean eating my own knight? Just just eating my own knight, hanging my own king, just right there, boom. If king d2, you tell me what he does, okay? You tell me, why did I resign? Why did I resign? You think I resigned because I didn't see king d2? How do I feel about top GMs being jealous of me? Are they? You have proof of this? Or what? Yeah, you see. A rook c2! Straight up, by the way. I, I Literally rook c2. I told you guys, when you see mate in one, look for better. Yeah, this is really... Yeah, this is nice. Yeah, rook c2 is actually... I mean, yeah, straight up. 
Um, no, I mean, I, 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 it's, you know, I, I was nervous. I was definitely really nervous here because not, not even from like a, I'm gonna be four out of four perspective, just like, this is a very scary position. Yeah, I should have went rook c4. This is, in hindsight, it's a very easy move to play and yeah, I'm slightly worse, but uh, rook g1 was already a, a step in the wrong direction. Yeah. You have to understand, look, chess, especially blitz chess, and especially with my mental health, it's very much like a game of resetting yourself. It's like tennis. I heard people say in tennis, the top players are all around the same level. It just comes down to mental, mental fortitude. So I'll give you an example. The last few games that I played, like against Shamanov and against, um, who is this? This is Drozdowski, right? This is Kasper Drozdowski, yeah. Uh, against these guys. Like, you know, I, I had good mental strength the whole time. Like, you know, I was, you know, playing and everything. And I was obviously, and then right here, I, I started getting nervous. The good thing is this position is already kind of like so easy. There was no nerves, really, that could have like made me lose anything. And then here I was also nervous. I thought, okay, we're gonna make a draw. Then all the pawns fell off the board. And I realized, okay, like, I have to push my pawns. He went here, I brought my king over, and then right around here I was like, okay, it's a draw. Like, I can't, you know, I, I, I realized here, even with three seconds on the clock, I need to push my pawn and put my rook behind the pawn. Very important. Push pawn, rook behind the pawn. And then he let my pawn go too far, now he's losing. Right, like, now he's, I, I mean, I, even though I was nervous, it was a simple endgame for me. You, not for you guys, you guys would have lost this with both colors. However, um... You know, the Shamanov game as well, like I, even at the end, like around here, I had enough time and I was, I was confident. I, I wasn't that nervous. I found this, I got really confident here. And once he got down to five seconds, I got really confident. So there was this moment I needed to focus. I found rookie eight and I realized, wait a minute, he's under a lot of pressure. And now queen here and, and yeah, and, and luckily, you know, he got down to like two seconds and that's it. I, I knew it was over. But in the game against Donkey Man, that never happened. Like, despite having him under pressure, he kept finding really good, def like knight d7's a great move, I didn't see that at all, like trying to play knight c5. I knew I was fine, I was confident. And then right here, right here, mentally I checked out a little bit, right? So, right here I was like, uh-oh. And I, I kind of like thought 10 seconds, I played a very lazy move and my entire idea didn't even work, right? So, you know, I, I needed to do something else. I could have played queen d5, sure, I could have played rook c4, but there's like these moments in these games where like one move changes the whole thing. And I'm one out, I'm two out of three in those games right now where one move could change everything. And I got lucky in the third game that it wasn't the draw. This game, uh, you know, he, chess is hard, so. Also, this the, the guy that I just played is probably going to be a GM in like a year. Who is this? Eri Kilic. This is a Turkish player whose rating is 2440. He's an international master. He got it this last year. Yeah, he'll be GM. I mean, 